everybody. Great to see everybody here. My name is Brian. I serve as the lead pastor here, and I'm delighted that you're here this morning. I always want to tell you that uh, just because I love you, and I want to see you grow in your faith, and I want to see you grow in your relationships with one another. So I'm so glad and grateful that each one of you are here today. And uh, also those people who are watching us on our YouTube channel. I know several people uh, watch us on there, so that goes, ar- goes around the world, as you know, on the internet. So I want to welcome you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we're in the third week of a series that I'm calling just How to Hear God's Voice. So can I see your hand if you want to learn how to better hear God's voice? Did you know that he's speaking He's a, he is a speaking God. He is a very relational God. He's been speaking all throughout time, all throughout the Bible. He's been speaking. And so the question is, how well are we listening? Are we listening to his voice? And if we, and if we will listen, we will hear him speak clearly to us. And I hear him speaking clearly to me right now, telling him to remind me, to remind you about our Christmas auditions, okay? We have, uh, we have a Christmas play that we're going to be putting on on December the 21st and the, uh, 3rd, and the Lord is using my wife to remind me to speak and tell you if you have kids interested in auditioning for our Christmas play, we're going to do it right after service today, all right? All right, did I hear God? I heard God through my wife, all right? All the, all the gentlemen, you need to do that, all right? <laughs> there was a young farmer who was uh, standing in a field one day, and he observes, he's looking around, he's, he's looking at the sky, and he sees this very peculiar cloud formation up there, and it was almost like the, the letters of a, of a G and a, and a P, and a C. And he thought to himself, well, this is, this is maybe a call from God. He is writing this on the clouds for me. And that G and P and C, that just means go preach Christ. So this farmer was like, I've just received a call from God. And so he rushes back to his little country church and back to the leaders the, uh, of the church. And he insists that he's been called to preach the word. And they didn't want to squash his enthusiasm. So the next Sunday, they let him uh, fill the pulpit to preach the word. And that Sunday, the sermon was horrendous. It was long. It was drawn out. It was boring. It was tedious. It was virtually incoherent. Nobody understood a thing that the guy said. And finally, when it ends, the, the leaders just were, they sat in, sti- in silence because they were so stunned about how bad the sermon was. And, um, and one of the old uh, church leaders muttered to the would-be preacher, and he said, it seems to me that the clouds were telling you, go plant corn. Okay, so. <laughs> so, I've never really experienced a message from God like that in the clouds. And to be honest with you, I've never experienced a message from God like an audible voice. But I've heard people say that they've heard the audible voice of God. And I do believe that he speaks. But I've never heard it before. But um, I believe that God has uh, has been speaking in many, many different ways. And throughout this series, I'm giving you maybe the the top six ways that God speaks into our lives, and this is what this series is all about. So let me real quick, quickly, and if you're taking notes, just jot this down. Uh, the six ways that God speaks regularly in our lives. Number one is the Bible. First and foremost, the most consistent, the most reliable, the most healthy way to hear God's voice is by reading your Bible on a regular basis. Can I hear an amen? amen. Okay. The second way we talked about last week was your desires, the desires that God gives you. And we looked at that verse that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Today we're going to talk about specifically how God speaks through other people. Then the next two weeks, Pastor Rory is going to uh, teach about how God speaks through open doors, closed doors, opportunities 
And he's going to speak the following week about how God speaks through our pain, through the things that we go through, through even our times of uh, difficulty and suffering. And then the last way is just by, I just call it by promptings, promptings of the Holy Spirit, where he puts something on your heart, he moves, he speaks, he whispers uh, in some way to let you know what he is saying. So we're going to continue along those lines and talk more about how God speaks to us. But our theme verse has been in John chapter 10, verse uh, 3 and 5. It says this, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep, how many of you know we are God's sheep? Jesus is our shepherd. The sheep do what? Listen to his voice. And look at what the sheep does. He calls his, his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. And when he has brought out his own, he goes ahead of them. How many of you are glad that God goes ahead of us, prepares the way? And his sheep follow him because why? They know his voice. But they will never, see, look at this, they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. How many of you guys know that there are many voices competing for our attention these days? But we, as the church of Jesus Christ, as the people of God, need to be paying attention to one voice. First and foremost is the voice of God. And that's what we've been talking about in my prayer as we've gone through this is that uh, it's found in uh, Proverbs 3 verse 6 that we would listen for God's voice in everything that we do. In every single aspect of our lives, in every single relationship, that we would be attentive to God's voice in everything that we do and everywhere that we go because he's the one who keeps us on track. Right? He's the one who leads us into our purpose. He's the one who leads us into our destiny. And he keeps us on track with his voice. So we need to be good sheep. And we need to be attuned to the voice of our shepherd. Amen? And Jesus even clearly and emphatically said it multiple times in the Gospels when he said, and this is in Luke 8, chapter 8, he says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Right? All right. Anybody have ears? Okay. Would you say this? Would you put your hands on your ears just real quick and just say, Lord, let me hear. Lord, let me hear your voice. <clears throat> In his book uh, called Directions, there is an author named James Hamilton who shares an insight about listening to God. And he said this. He said, before refrigerators... <clears throat> Anybody remember the time before refrigerators? Okay, a couple of us do. All right. <laughs> before refrigerators, people used things called ice houses to preserve their food. Ice houses had thick walls, no windows, and a tightly fitted door. In the winter, when streams and lakes were frozen, uh, large blocks of ice were cut, were hauled into those ice houses, and covered with sawdust, and often the ice would last well into the summer. One man lost a valuable watch while he was working in an ice, in an ice house. He searched for it di diligently everywhere, carefully raking through the sawdust, but he could not find it. His fellow workers also looked, but their efforts too were not successful. And a small boy, listen to this, a small boy who heard about the fruitless search slipped into the ice house during the noon hour and soon emerged with the watch. And amazed, the men asked him, how in the world did you find that watch? And listen, listen to what he said. He said, I closed the door. I laid down in the sawdust and I kept very still. And soon I heard the watch ticking. Wow. <clears throat> Often the question is not, is God speaking? But the question is whether we are still enough and quiet enough to hear it. <clears throat> so today I want us to talk about another way that God speaks to us, and that is through other people. If you're married, how many of you know God can speak to you through your spouse? All right. <laughs> 
If you have friends, how many of you know that God can speak to you through your friends? Even, even God can speak to you through random people that you've never even met before. It's a wonderful and powerful thing. But God uses other people. He uses other people to speak into our lives. And, catch this, he wants to use you to speak into lives of other people around you. This is how God works. In fact, I was doing a little research about, um, about this this week, and, and I found out something pretty interesting. This is a little square in your notes, and it says this. In, in 1955, let me set the stage and explain what this is. Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham created a technique to help them understand themselves better and their relationships with themselves and with other people. So they, they created this thing they called the Johari window. Okay, The concept is pretty simple. And, and it's just imagine that your life is broken up into four different squares. Okay, So it's up on the screen. It's in your notes. Look at those squares. The first quadrant is called the arena quadrant. I want you to just think about this with me. And it's the things that, that you know about you and that others know about you. It's your public persona. For example, I know and you know that I'm fairly comfortable, not 100%, but fairly comfortable speaking in public. Okay, I know that and you know that. And it's the, it's the things that we all know that we think about, that we talk about openly with one another. So that's the first quadrant. Think about this with me. Now let's move to the second Quadrant. This is called the facade quadrant. It's the things that you know about you, but others don't know about you. Okay? This is who you are when no one is looking. The facade quadrant is where we sometimes fake it, where we sometimes hide our emotions, and, and sometimes we can actually get spiritually stuck right there. And for example, the facade quadrant is where everyone thinks you're fine, but in reality, you're hurt. It's where things like jealousy live. It's where things like anger and depression and those kinds of things live right there in that quadrant. The third quadrant is called the blind spot quadrant. Anybody know you have blind spots in your life? Okay. This is the quadrant that it's, it's the things that others know about you that you don't know about you. Okay, think about this. This is, this is walking around with your fly open, right? <laughs> okay, this is having broccoli in your teeth kind of stuff. It's things that other people can see that is open and clear, but you are blind to it for whatever reason. And everybody has blind spots in our lives. And if you don't think you have a blind spot, well, guess what? That's probably your blind spot. Okay? Now, the fourth quadrant is the unknown quadrant. Okay? This is the things that you, you don't know about you and others don't even know about you. This is your God given gifts in designs that that may not have even revealed themselves to you yet. But God put them in you before you were born. And and as time goes by, he will reveal those things to you and help you to walk in them. And so while while there's so many different uh, ways that I could go in a message about God speaking to us through other people, through in this quadrant, I just want us to focus just for a few minutes on that third and the fourth quadrant, okay? The blind spot and the unknown. You see, I had, I had an unknown as I was growing up and before I, before I uh, entered into the ministry. I was actually uh, studying at the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga. And I was studying for uh, an occupation called physical therapy, Okay, one of, one of the things I wanted to do was just help people who had been hurt in some way, help them to recover, help them to get back to where they were in order to live full lives. And so that was my heart. That was what I was studying to do. But in my, in my heart, in my life, I felt this, this nagging sense 
of there's got to be something more. I knew it in my, in my spirit. And I call that just a, a feeling of holy discontent. And so I was pretty young in the Lord at that time. I had been walking with the Lord for about two to three years. And I was just on fire for Him. I was at church. Every time the doors would open, I was just studying the Word, spending time in prayer. I just loved God and wanted to know Him more, wanted to grow in my relationship with Him and do what He wanted me to do with my life. So I had an unknown. I had this sense of, God, what do you want me to do? What's my purpose? What's my destiny? So I began to seek him. Because how many of you know that when you don't have the answers, God has the answers? When you don't know the decisions to make, when you don't know the path, God already knows it. In fact, he designed you. He made you. He knows intimately who you are, how you're designed, how he has wired you. And he knows the circumstances that you find yourselves in. But God, but I was in an unknown and I began to seek him and just to hear his voice because I needed to know more about direction for my life. <clears throat> and I remember on August the 1st, 1997, in our little house that we grew up in in East Ridge, Tennessee, I began to seek the Lord and in my bedroom, on my knees, just praying, I felt the Lord say ministry to me that just that one word he said ministry and it, and I felt it right here how many of you know this is where your spirit is and so like I felt that word come in and it was an authoritative word it was something that was outside of myself and I think it was the first time I ever heard God speak and it was this word ministry Nothing else. I wish it was a sentence. I wish it was a paragraph or give me a whole chapter of what that means and what that looks like. But he didn't. All he said was that one word. And how many of you know that just one word is enough when it comes from God? And it can change the whole trajectory of your life. But that was an unknown. And God began to speak to me about ministry. Now, here's the, here's the amazing thing. I told nobody about that experience. I told nobody about my prayer time. I told nobody that I thought I might be called to, to serve God in ministry. And then a few weeks later, we actually had an, a lady evangelist come to the church that I was a part of at that time. And she had a very prophetic gift. And I remember this service, and remember, I was, I'm pretty brand new to this whole thing. So I'm like, oh, what is this person doing? She's, she's claiming that she hears from God and speaks to other people what God is saying. Okay, I'm a little bit skeptical, but let's just see how this turns out, okay? And so um, we're in this service, and we're in the worship time, and she's a singer, so she's singing a song, and we're just worshiping. And she says, young man, now I've never met her before. She says, young man, come here. And so she called me, she called me up, and we're right in front of everybody. Now, I'm a young man. I'm like a leader in the youth group at that point. And she looks at me, and she, she grabs my hand and says, I don't know if you know this, young man, but God has his hand on you for ministry. <clears throat> and, she, and she confirmed the word that I already had received in my prayer closet several weeks before. But what that was is that God was speaking through another person into my life. And it changed the whole trajectory, direction of my life. How do many of you know that God still speaks through other people? Even in our unknowns. Even in our blind spots. Even through people that we have not ever met before. God also speaks through our familiar relationships. Through our wives, our husbands, through our friends, our family, through our co-workers, our bosses. God can speak through familiar relationships too. And I remember I had a, I had a um, seminary professor we would go through, seminary students have to go through a, a preaching class, okay, where we get to practice preaching to each other. 
It's really difficult, and I, do, and I did not like it at all. It's much easier to preach to, to you guys than it would be to preach to my own peers who are my own age, who are dissecting everything that I do, looking at all, the, all my movements, all my voice inflections, all my body language, everything. They're dissecting every little thing and talk about self-conscious. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to take that class again even now. <clears throat> But I remember having this, this seminary professor, and after his class, he sat me down, he invited me for coffee, and he said, Brian, you have a gift. You have a gift that even you can't see. You have a gift to communicate. You have a gift to share stories. You're very likable. And, you know, he's like telling me all these things. But what was that? That was God using my seminary professor to encourage me, to speak to me. How many of you know that sometimes when it comes to your own gifts and your own callings, sometimes it requires another person to come alongside of you and say, I see something of God in you. And I want to encourage that and I want to stir that up. And I believe that God wants to use you in a mighty way. So God speaks to us. He, he identifies things in us that sometimes we can't even see. He confirms thing, things and he encourages things. This is why I believe so much in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Especially in those gifts that are like uh, the ministry, get like the prophetic and the words of knowledge, the words of wisdom. All of those kinds of things are so, so important because messages from God can come to us through other people. God speaks to us. And how well are we listening? I'm telling you just these stories, not to pat myself on the back or lift me up, but just to tell you that I've experienced firsthand the power of God speaking through another person. And I pray that for you as well, that as you're going through your life, that God will organize and order your life in such a way where he sets you up for divine conversations, where he can speak to you and encourage you and lift you up and bring you into your destiny as well. There's a great example from, about this whole idea from uh, the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And it's about a young man named Saul. Now Saul had a very big, big uh, unknown quadrant. And he had a very big blind spot quadrant in his life. And he had an encounter with an old prophet named Samuel. <clears throat> Saul was from a very non-important family. And he had no claim to anything great. But God had something in store for Saul that he would have never guessed, he would have never dreamed about. I want us to read a little bit of that story in 1 Samuel chapter 9, starting in verse 15. It says this, Now the Lord had told Samuel the previous day, About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. You are to anoint him to be the leader of my people Israel. He will rescue them from the Philistines, for I have looked down on my people in mercy and have heard their cry. How many of you know that sometimes because you've been praying, because you've been crying and the Lord has heard you, he will send another person to send you the rescue that you need. He said, anoint him. And then he says, when Samuel, when the prophet Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, that's the man I told you about. He will rule my people. Just then, Saul approached Samuel at the gateway and asked, can you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up to the place of worship ahead of me, and we will eat there together. We'll have some Starbucks, 
and then in the morning I'll tell you what I want, what I, what I want you to know and I will send you on your way. <clears throat> and by the way, don't worry about those donkeys that were lost three days ago, for they have been found. And I am here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all Israel's hopes. How many of you know that when God wants to send a message to you, he can send it through another person? And, and, and it doesn't have to be all watered down, and it doesn't have to be something that you expected. <clears throat> God is much bigger than your box, right? He's much bigger than the way that our human brains can understand and think. And so Paul reply, uh, Saul replies, But I am only from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. And my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking to me like this? You see, Saul came from a family that wasn't all that prestigious and important. And he knew now, through this prophet, that God had his hand on him for something very, very special. And God used another person to reveal the, the purpose, the destiny that he was chosen for. And so if you're taking notes, write this down. This is the first point. God uses people to confirm things. We need to know that. God uses people to confirm things. Confirm his word, confirm things that he's already spoken. To confirm your purpose, confirm your destiny, God will use other people to do that. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we humble enough to receive that from the mouth of another person? Sometimes when we think of an other people, our pride gets in the way, right? Our ego gets in the way and we're like, no, God's not going to speak to me through that person. You ever had an experience like that? <clears throat> but God uses people to confirm things in our lives. And number two, and this is also equally important, God uses people to confront things. Anybody like to be confronted? Okay, I don't either. Anybody like to confront other people? No, I don't either. This is quadrant three, right? This is blind spots. This is how God helps us with our blind spots. There are times when God will use someone else to confront something in our own lives because he's been trying to get our attention, but guess what? We're not listening. Have you ever been there before? You felt like God was speaking something specifically to you, telling you to do this, do that, take this action, speak to this, do this, whatever it is. And God comes along and he uses another person to confront that, that you're not doing. And maybe you're dragging your feet or maybe you're procrastinating or maybe you're saying, oh, I'll do it when everything comes together, right? But God says through another person, I'm going to confront that in you because I love you, right? Right? Because I love you and I want you to grow. And there's, there's this thing that it, it almost has, every time, it has to do with something that I may be compromising. Some sin that I may be doing. Some element of pride or stubbornness or ego that I may be struggling with. And God says, you need to listen to me. Or it could be issues of disobedience. Where I'm just saying, God, you've called me to do this, but the bottom line is I don't want to. I just don't want to. And if we keep reading a few more chapters in uh, 1 Samuel, we see uh, something incredible happen with Saul and Samuel as an example of this. This is years later now. Saul has gone from doubting himself to praising himself. And God has had enough of it. So look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. It says, Then the Lord 
said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king. For he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. And Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. These are not fun conversations to have, right? But they are necessary because sometimes we have blind spots in our lives that God needs to make us aware of before they crash us, before they sabotage us. And God will send someone. It could be a person with a, uh, you have a one-on-one conversation with some, someone at the coffee shop. Or it could be a message from a pastor. It could be another voice in your life. But he sometimes will confront very strongly something in our lives. And he does it because he loves us. And he wants to help us to move forward in him. So God speaks to people. He speaks to us and he will use their words to confirm things. And to confront things. In our life that God wants to speak to. One of the questions that I I learned the hard way years ago is this. One of the things we have to learn about is this. Who has permission to speak into my life even if I don't like what they're going to say? Have I given anybody permission to speak to me openly and honestly and hold me accountable to things even if it's stuff that I don't want to hear? This is called an accountability partner, right? This is called a confidant. This is called somebody who you can be 100% real with. And so we have to ask ourselves, do we, have we given permission to anybody in our lives to speak truth to us? It's important because God will use that person to speak to us and help us to see especially our blind spots. It's not common anymore. To have a boss, to have a coach, to have a pastor, or have a friend who can give us a hard truth and we don't get offended and get up and leave. Who has permission to confront you? Do they know that they have that permission? Tell them. You have my permission to tell me the truth. They should be an encourager. They should be someone who loves you. They should be someone who who, uh, prays for you. And they should be allowed to speak up to you even when you don't want to hear it. Amen? You love me, don't you? Okay, I love you too. That's why I'm telling you the truth. Confrontation brings maturation. In other words, when you're open and you're humble enough to receive things that the Lord may want to confront in your life, if you'll receive that with a humble heart, If you'll receive that with gratitude, what will it do? It will produce maturity. It will produce depth of character. Confrontation brings maturation. Number three is this. If God uses someone to speak into your life, obey. That's not not that deep, but it's pretty powerful. If you know that God is speaking to you powerfully, directly, and personally through the life of another person, trust God in that and take action. Trust Him and take action. Here's the bottom line of the message today. This is the point that I really want you to grasp. Is this, God aligns you with people in your life for divine conversations. He will use the people in your life to speak to you, and he will speak through you to the people in your life. So God speaks to us through the Bible. God speaks to us through desires. God speaks to us through other people to confirm things and to confront things. 
And I believe that many, many of us are in a place right now where God may be speaking to you specifically through another person. And I want to encourage you today, listen to God's voice in that. Listen to his wisdom in that. Listen to his guidance and his direction in that. <clears throat> when we listen to the voice of God, he brings us into peace. He brings us into purpose. He brings us into destiny. So shut out the voice of the stranger. Shut out the voice of this world that screams loudly at you. And listen to the one voice that matters the most. The voice of your shepherd. The voice of your Lord, your Savior. <clears throat>